This will be this will be fun. Life feels kind of strange because I don't feel in a lot of ways like a grown up. I just still see this little kid and as I look around, we have a home and I have a job and I kind of laughed and, and said it still feels like I'm playing house. It doesn't, it's just a strange thing, but, but it's like I have a real life. The uh, first song on this new project um, is a song called Best Days. and. Uh, interesting thing about it, it was um, it was actually supposed to be on Today is the Day, and it was a song that we just couldn't, I couldn't finish it, I couldn't finish the writing of it. I, I really wanted the lyric to say the right thing and really be well thought out, and the whole idea of the song about best days is, as believers, if we really look at our lives, kind of the whole big picture, it's about um, our best days being in front of us and not behind us. Every Christian lived like their best days were actually going to be in front of them and not behind them. And uh, so I wanted to write a song that both said that lyrically and sounded like that musically. And so uh, hopefully we hit it. Um, I'm, I'm real happy with the way it came out. It's certainly why we put it first on the project. Who knows uh, what life's like right now, but you got to believe one day you're going to be in heaven with the Lord. And uh, this life that we've spent on this earth is a small sliver of the whole big picture and so uh, it's all about our best days being in front of us and not behind us. How funny is it that the song that was causing all the problems uh, and, and taking us forever and taking up so much time is the thing that spurred on this. I mean, think about it. Um, when I called me and said we need to write a new verse for this song, write that verse, and then we love the verse and go, actually, we need to put a new chorus. We need to make this into a whole new song. Write a new chorus, and then it's, you know what? This chorus needs to, different verses. It's how, how funny that this has been, this progression. So I think it after, um, after that second chorus where it goes, you are amazing, more than amazing, forever a God, and more than enough. Maybe doing some, something that has almost like a hymn-esque feel to it. I just get that picture of, uh, uh, of people, you know, hands raised, passionately worshiping God on weekends. I just think it's such a cool thing. You get such a short amount of time with people. By the time people park and maybe check their kids in if they've got kids and really wind down and get focused, we might get people's attention for 10 or 15 minutes maybe. And um, what a cool thing to just say, God, you are amazing and think about all the great things that Jesus did. Um, and I love this idea, uh, that, that line that Mia wrote, you're the God who washed our feet. What a humbling lyric. to eat sushi at our favorite sushi place called Makuni. Which, oh, which we almost got and hopefully we will survive. <laughs> so there's a song on the album called Love By You, and uh, it was such a neat experience to actually uh, work on that song and get it finished. And uh, one of the fondest memories I have of that song actually happened after we finished it. We uh, we got completely done, mixed, mastered, and it sits on my computer up in the studio. 
and uh, and we've got a thing called Apple TV, which ties into my studio computer, and we watch movies on it. And so we like to do movie night, just Laura and, and I and the boys. And uh, we were laying down cuddling, and um, we got done with a movie one night. And whenever the movie's finished, uh, it'll start playing just a slideshow, and it'll pick a random song. So on all of my iTunes, Love By You comes on. Uh, which I thought was pretty wild, uh, the odds of that. And it starts playing this slideshow of the boys from about three years ago. And so Liam was like two, and Levi was five. And uh, the music's going along and talking about I was made to be loved by you. And it's a really uh, kind of a soothing song, I think. And uh, I look over halfway through the song, and Laura is just destroyed. I mean, just sobbing, and I'm crying. and sitting there laying with our boys and it was it was a really special moment and I think um, even that one moment in time was a good uh, reminder to again really try to live in the moment so we're headed over to get some coffee coffee coffee, coffee. coffee. hey just throwing down some bloom Uh, I said, I said, I'll bet they'll be there. The people I've been able to write with, um, each one of them really hold a special place in my heart, and um, Mia Fields is certainly one of those. She's become a great friend of my family, and um, it's just a really neat thing. My boys get excited whenever she's coming, and um, always go, hey guys, Mia's coming, and yay, and, and uh, my wife absolutely adores her, and she's got so much talent with just coming up with the right way to say something and so a lot of times I'll give her my thoughts and she'll kind of say what if we said it this way I don't care about money don't care about fame I'm not chasing some great accolade oh I want more it's a song called Made for More um, and uh I remember, um, it's another song I wrote with Mia. Um, it was really neat to hear her talk about her perspective of, uh, of writing the song. And I remember she said that, uh, she actually said, I said, like, this isn't the life that I planned out. Um, this, is, this is the life that, um, that I ended up with, but I don't, which is awesome and I'm super grateful, but I didn't do it to get fans. And you know, the first lyric of the song says, uh, it says, I don't care about money, don't care about fame, which is really true. Um, I'm not chasing some great accolade. Oh, I want more. And kind of the idea we talked about was that really, um, I mean, this is about my own experience, but I think this we could all relate to this, that we were made for more than things like that. And um, that we were created for a greater purpose, and that was to... Uh, to love God and to serve Him. I remember kind of humming this this melody and singing it's real life and uh, she said what is that? And I said uh, oh it's just this that, uh, I said that conversation we had kind of spurred on this idea and she said we are finishing that tomorrow. She kind of pulled the, the song out of me and she would say what if you said that like this and there was one line in the song I remember specifically um, and there's real pain and there's real tears. Uh, I'll get choked up even saying this. Um, I told her after this, I said, oh, that was a cheap shot. And I had to get up and leave the room. But she looked at me and she said, but the way my baby loves me somehow carries all these years. And that felt like the most authentic thought that um, that I was ever going to sing. But the way my baby loves me somehow carries all these years. And this is real life. I didn't go into this project going, I'm gonna do a record and it's gonna be all about real life and it's gonna be as authentic as possible and it's not something that you really control, you just kinda of let it come out. And I trust that that God's hand is on the process and that's what he 
uh, wants to have happen. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And it was just, it's just what has been in me. To say it was the most emotional song uh, that I've ever been a part of writing would be an understatement. I, I think I spent most of the time walking out of the room in tears. I'm just a flawed guy who is really grateful to get to use what I love to do to serve God. And I'm standing in God's presence and I finally realize that this is real life. The life we're going to live in heaven, that's the real deal. <laughs>